Ah, yeah, I'm sorry. I was talking to myself for a second there. You know, I thought it would be a good idea to just, you know, be mute for warm a minute. Up. No, my name is Sash. As you, warm up, yeah, warm up. Or maybe I just did the stream a favor by not talking the entire time. It could also be a thing. But my name is Sash. Thankfully, I'm not alone here. I'm with one guy from Poland who doesn't even sound like he's from Poland. It's Dominic, as usual. Yeah, hello there, and uh, hopefully that warm up like will stay that way. Only the the fifteen seconds at the very beginning of the stream, and hopefully you won't be muted for any more time because yesterday, uh, yeah, a tiny bit of a problem during the first match. But uh, for today, we've got a new series of Bo One matches, another group right here in the CS:GO Legend series number two, and we're kicking off with an amazing match with a powerful uh, lineup right off the bat. It's going to be, after all, Plank Ducks versus Arctic, mm, so possibly one of the biggest names uh, in the competition overall, and possibly the winner of this match might grab the first place spot in the, overall in the entirety of the group, but that uh, will have to be proven when we finally get into the game, uh, but there's still a little bit of stuff we'd like to talk about. Of course, next up is going to be UX versus Pugstars. And now looking at the lineups that finally got filled out on HLTV, some things are starting to make sense for me. And I actually know a little bit about Pugstars, so I'm happy to say that. It's great that you have some knowledge, Joe, because I can tell you one interesting thing about those guys from Lithuania we're going to see first with Rectic. Playing Ducks have recently actually been working good on Lithuanian land, so the competition is national. It is not that kind of great duel where you'd say, oh my god, they won a big international land. But they still made it. Afterwards, they directly got roster changes all over the place. Two players left, a new one joined. That directly left again. So this is the reason why they're playing with Hype, a Brit, today. And this is where it could get complicated. They're all Lithuanians. They all are, three of them are in the main roster for a while, Poon, Lucky, and Kalinka. They know each other. But the communication, that is will be interesting to see. Yeah, definitely the communication might become a little bit of a problem. But um, other than that... Uh... Actually, just looking at the at the recent score lines from both the teams, it seems surprising to see that they have so many losses out there lately, just not doing so well on the international scene. Uh, I definitely know a lot of these Polish teams that Arctic have lost 0-2 against, and uh, yeah, these guys aren't so bad, but then I would definitely expect a little bit more from Arctic, who just uh, a couple months ago... Uh, we're able to beat some much, much better teams on a, on a very high level, fighting on some uh, real good tournaments. But yeah, of course, the changes uh, are happening. It's it's not that same lineup anymore. Uh, but the same thing actually happened for playing Ducks. So it's going to be a clash of possibly some so uh, some new additions to the team, and it's going to prove who chose better players. Yeah, this is the thing. Like. Both the teams, they're fighting the best of one. This is where it starts. If we can we can once more go for that and say, yeah, uh, our top favorite is it in the end. They're fully going down the drain. We've had it yesterday with Isu, but they lost the first match. And you and I, I, I think we were both like, okay, yeah, nice try, Isu. We'll see you next time. But then they magically made it into the final one of the Group A and made it out of that. They didn't have the slightest bit of a struggle there in cash. They decimated the Hungarians from Hop, who looked so strong in the beginning. And now this could happen once more. UX Gaming and Pogsasaurus, we can say whatever they want. They're definitely the underdogs in this group. And how they will perform, this is what will be interesting. Yeah, Pogstars in the past, like uh, the players on the team have been changing their nicknames a lot. The, the name of the team has changed a lot. The rosters have been changed a lot. Uh, but there is one Polish player that I know a little bit personally and I've been talking to him a lot of times and he's been hyping up his team a lot of times, asking if he could get an invite into some tournaments that I'm commentating and stuff like that. Uh, and in some of these tournaments that they've shown up, they've been able to surprise quite massively and they have some good results in uh, PCWs, so so there is a possibility they're going to be able to achieve something in here. And on the other hand, I'm expecting UX Gaming to also not go down without a fight. And with Arctic and, and Playing Dogs being in a little bit of a slump lately, all of a sudden from a group where yesterday we, we possibly thought that it's going to be pretty one-sided in favor of Arctic or Playing Dogs and it's just going to go down to the battle between them, there's a possibility someone will upset them right here and just like Isoba from, from the loser's brackets will take it all. 
The lineup is very interesting for puck stores. I'm seeing that right now. They have a, a UK guy, a Latvian, a Polish, a, a, someone from Iran, and one from Belarus. Is it Belarus? I think so. Yeah, Lot. yeah. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, one hell of an interesting Belarus. lineup. That is, communication-wise, really interesting. And also, once upon a time, we're seeing someone from the Middle East uh, competing in such a tournament and I mean the Iranian guy he's just 16 years old if it's correctly I'm not quite sure if he lives somewhere in Europe and this is just his origin like some players have in Germany like I don't know if you know from ironic Saiken he also has a Vietnamese mm -hmm. flag but he speaks German fluently he's a German so this is the thing unfortunately we don't know but what we know that US, UX Parksters it is like a big kinder surprise you know you don't know what's coming out of it if you have that great great kinder surprise where the best toy comes out of or you'll have the one with the annoying one you already have seven times so that will be very, very interesting to see but first of all rectic versus playing ducks and if you don't know you can do one great thing here at elc you can bet betties and betties are our currency pretty much and you can earn this by watching and by subscribing to our channel right here and with those betties which you win you can also buy tickets for the giveaway that's correct right it's so complicated sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that's you, correct. You, help me out, help you me can out. just you can just type in exclamation mark giveaway and everything will be will be said to you. And also we have amazing mods on this channel who always will take care of you. So if you don't know anything, you can always ask them. And I can already see a lot, a lot of uh, of people uh, from teams participating in the chat so already one thing that goes away is that there's not going to be any communication issues for playing ducks since hype is just uh, also lithuanian and he lives in the uk and talking about pug stars overall uh, as far as i know axeline he's lived in in the uk so he's gonna have pretty good english out there mm, uh, there's a british person as you already said and overall their communication should also be quite fine i mean probably Pug stars, you know, the, the, the sole name just tells you that these are good people on a, on a high individual level who will be mixing <laughs> with each other, who will probably know how to speak English because that's how you communicate in pugs uh, overall. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't doubt that they will be able to do fine right there. Yeah, pretty much just a mixture of rank A players on ECA. You pick them up. Welcome. Cool. Let's make a team. But uh, this is where it could be problematic. I don't know about you how much they have played as a team. I mean, two of the players are not really known. When we take a look, Breck and Ardera are just somehow mixed up. Nevis and Kaiwai and Cynics, they might be, you know, known. For, they know each other for a little bit as far as I know. But what I see problematic is that tactical finesse that Puckstars might not come up with. I mean, they, they could be godlike fraggers who are just coming around the corner, say, hey, how are you doing? Making a 5k and leaving the side again. But... I just see that this might be getting problematic once UX analyzes it and just shuts them down in the most basic way. Because aimers can always be, yeah, not always, just can often be outplayed. Let's say it like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a possibility like that. So, uh, so we'll find out. So that actually talking about it already, there's a big possibility that it's also going to be an interesting match. Uh, now that we've all, already said so much stuff about these two teams. And uh, both of them will just uh, just fight it out not to go down. All of them have a lot to prove. And it's going to be quite dangerous for playing Ducks and an Arctic, in my opinion, because they cannot lose against UX or Pug Stars, or otherwise it's going to be a little bit uh, of an annoyance for them. It's going to be a little bit disappointing for their fans and stuff like that. And especially seeing their latest score lines, it's going to be good for them to finally get some matches going. So both of these teams will also fight to grab the first place spot, to get some victories on the way, to qualify for some land, to grab some prize money again, to, to not lose the motivation. Yeah, and if you don't know what this is actually all about, ELC Legend Series, this is number two. The number one has already been played out where Red Reserve with the Brazilian lineup a few months ago, won it right now, though. What we're seeing is that all of the teams are playing a line or have their best of ones, and the first of every group gets invited to a LAN in Hamburg. So if you don't know what this LAN is actually about, you can find all the information underneath on the website. You can buy some tickets. You can go there and have a lot of, lot of fun because that LAN... I mean, we've both been there, and um, the mixture, the, 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 the environment is just more likely... Very family-wise, kind of. Not a massive venue. It just feels very exclusive and very special. 
Um, so yeah, this is definitely a thing you should go to if you're living near Hamburg. If you're also interested in flying to Hamburg, I mean, why not go there? Yeah, definitely could be an interesting uh, of a trip. And uh, I've been there a couple of times already, and I always love it when I come there. Uh, and there's always something to do for the visitors, so it's not only about watching the matches and then going back home so that you don't really get much to do right there. You can also stay after the event and hang out with, uh, with other people, with the crew and with the teams even. So, uh, yeah, that's quite cool. All right, so we should be good to go in just a matter of seconds. Let's just take a look what happened yesterday once more. Isuba took down... Hop in the end, that was quite surprising for us in cash. And now we have once more to get something straight. They won, they played three maps in a row and they got that massive momentum. Do you think that there might be a good disadvantage to the team who takes that upper bracket second match at 18 CET because they don't continuously play? Uh, there definitely is a little bit of a possibility like that, although with them being comfortable at home, there's no like risk that when you're at LAN, you're not going to have a PC to sit at uh, to, to play some matches and stuff. So even if they don't continue like playing maybe some uh, some Clan Wars in the meantime, or they can just, just go ahead and play some deathmatch on some bots and, and stuff like that. So I think they should still like stay in the game with their heads clear. Uh, but there surely is a possibility that some of them will just go away from the PC for the three hours because they know that they will have that free time guaranteed and that might backfire. Is is Clan Wars still a recent word being used? I just uh, mean well, I well, haven't heard it in years. Uh, PCW, I, I everybody still uses it as a, as a password usually even to, to the servers. I, I still hear it all the time actually. <laughs> I've, I've, yeah, but the word, yeah, okay. Maybe maybe I'm just too new fashioned hipster one with the word. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know like, what I would say. Nobody really says plan war, but they do say PCW yeah. all the time. Yeah, yeah, no, this is the abbreviation. So, but yes, I, I know what you, I know what you mean from the start on, but it's, it's nice to hear such old words, kind of. You know, it feels like back in the 1.6 CSS days, which I was not even really into because, you know, Counter Strike Go was then. The thing to do and it got casual it got skin so all the aesthetic things but this is not what we're logically getting into i mean you know it's always on the edge but you can also bet here at elc this is the great thing once more if you just joined in you can go use your betties which is our in-game currency this is like i don't know very very useful if you want to go for the giveaway or if you want to go just have fun you can gamble so if you're like a north american streamer then you can definitely go and use those once more. And yeah, I think that is very helpful. And what you're seeing right now, it is actually playing Ducks having a big advantage on our chat, um, who see them as a big favorite. What, what do you think? Um, not really sure what to say about this one. I think that playing Ducks will be the favorites walking into the matchup overall. Comparing the lineups, in my opinion, playing Ducks look better. But as I mentioned, like both the teams likely not doing so great. These are different lineups from what I actually know and have all the info on. So uh, we might be seeing some hiccups uh, and and both of the teams like having a little bit of problems. Yeah, I just I just don't know. Like funny wise, I have I have I have people in my friends list, and a few months ago. There was a match from Godsend, and we know Godsend. I mean, that is Pronax, that is, was back in the day, JW, and they played a best of one on Cobblestone uh, against them. Playing Ducks won against Godsend, and afterwards, I think a 10 game lose streak or so just got running. So, uh, th this is always a little bit of fake of the online best of ones. I mean, you can beat X major winners for some reason. So, we'll see how playing Ducks will do that. Maybe we see Cobblestone. I would love to see that. But, um, the map pick thing, this is where we can get into what our predictions for the map picks is. So, therefore, we got to get more into detail, of course, what those teams usually pick and what they're into. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and... Um, hmm, that's difficult. I mean, Train is no map for playing Ducks, as it seems. Overpass as well, not really favorable. But they can play Mirage and Cash. And Rectic are into Nuke. And, yeah, okay, they have only played one time Mirage and won it. I think it's not really representative. I will say that our final... Okay, they will they will ban 
Inferno, they will ban Train, I think. Hmm. I don't know. I, I would say we're seeing... Um... That's a good question. Mm -hmm. What will we be seeing? I say cobblestone. Yes. Screw it. I say cobblestone. We're seeing cobblestone. I want to see cobblestone. Okay. In my opinion, maybe there's a possibility to go for Mirage. After all, when these teams have like one time played map, it doesn't mean that they don't like it or it doesn't mean that they like it because, you yeah. know, you can have like one win or one loss and it still doesn't tell you anything. Uh, because that one loss could have been uh, against a much better team or that one win could be against a 16-0 team in some local tournament or something like that. Uh, so you still have to be careful when you're calling stuff like that. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, of course. But it's not really representative. I mean, because you don't have much stats. They're not so internationally known that massively. And this is why we're going to find it out. It's going to be once more... It's a little bit like a school research experiment where you'll just will know once upon a time like how it will be. But after today, we're going to see two more days off the group stage here at ELC. We're going to see FTW Esports, Wise Wizards, once more some Germans, uh, Zoktai Gameplay DNA on a group D, Venko, Hamas, Existence, and Planet Key. So Group C and Group D are have promising teams in them. I, I somehow am a big fan of the Spanish and Portuguese guys. So let's let's see, who's your who's your favorite in C? Good. Uh, good in C in gameplay DNA FTW definitely putting these two teams up against each other in the finals at least for me right there. But I'm definitely looking forward to seeing Zakta. And I don't know much about the German teams, but if you can tell me something about Wise Wizards, maybe I'll change my mind. But I know something about UX and about the players that play there. I definitely am familiar with Planet Key. We've seen many other teams uh, from Germany already in the in the span of the Legend series. So there was Euronics, there was Legends, and uh, even Legends being a mix, I already knew some of the players. For Wise Wizards, it's quite tough for me to say anything about them. Yeah, I mean, you know, even even if I'm a countryman of them, I still, I have to say, you know, the German scene is sometimes a little bit obscure, and um, this is why I try to keep myself international. Um, what I'm really interested to see is Planet Key is making out of the... Because I see them having a good amount of chances. I mean, Vanko and Hamas, maybe that will be once more those uh, surprises. We just had it yesterday, Reason Gaming going really far. I mean, who expected UKCS to go somewhere that is not directly out of the groups or so? Like very lately, Playing Ducks played against uh, Planet Key. That was, oh, well, maybe not so very lately, but it was 20 days ago. But there, Planet Key won 16 1 on the first map and then 16 7 on the second. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that definitely makes me think that Planet Key could be in uh, in good form, maybe, and they'll have a good shot at that Group D for sure. But if, if not them, then probably Existence and the other two teams will be just like here, UX and Pogstars, up to surprising us. Yeah, in Germany we call such 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 a sixteen one. We call it a Schelle, but um, yeah, Planet Key is giving them away like you could not imagine. So. That will be interesting. Also, recently, Plant Key won at this Playing Ducks event, not with the Playing Ducks team, but at their headquarters somewhere in deep inside Germany uh, against Ironics. So one of the, they're like in a top five German scene. They're one of those top five teams, and I personally see that. Yeah, existence is the only real threat in that group. My opinion, Group D, existence is the only real threat. But we know right now, we know it's going to be Inferno. And I have that feeling, you know, I have that feeling. Who do you, let's, let's be honest, it's just about sympathy right now. Who do you want to see come out of this group? Out of this particular group? Um, as I mentioned. Uh, what does probably, your heart say? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for playing Ducks. I'm going to okay. go for ducks. I mean, I mean, duck is my spirit animal, and I love ducks overall. So uh, just because of why, the logo, wait, wait, they already wait, wait, wait. Won, a, won me over. Why are ducks your spirit animal? Why? why, why how does I, that make sense? I, I love ducks. I don't know. I don't, I don't have my little rubber, rubber duck like next to me, but uh, I have a ducky keyboard. I don't know. I, a lot of ducks <laughs> live right next to my house, and I love to watch them. I don't know. How how do you know you're making it sound like ducks live in a flat, you know, and they have wife duck and husband <laughs> duck and so no, I, no, I just there's mean a little, 
There's a, okay. there's a tiny river right next to me, so that's where they where Yeah, they I don't know what's going on in Poland. I mean, I mean that is a thing we, you know, the, there are some weird things going on sometimes in the rest of the world, but we're getting directly in Rectic Esports versus Playing Ducks, map number one. Or not. Those guys, or not? One AFK. <laughs> So we're gonna have a little bit of a, of a downtime right here, waiting for that one person to come back, and then the knife round is actually gonna go live indeed. So, luckily enough, there's 60 minutes round time, so they can take their time, I guess. <laughs> yeah, they probably need to take that time. So, well, just make a chill one, get a good one, and if you're just having a lot of time, we'll be here for a good amount of hours. So, just you know, if you're a little bit it's very hot right now, so get yourself some refreshments, get yourself something to eat, sit down, and if you have a cool chair, you know, put it back like something like 60, 70 degrees. Enjoy the day at ELC Gaming TV with Rectic starting up against Playing Ducks. If there wouldn't be one guy AFK, it's, it's a shame. No, yeah, and the terrorists are just casually standing right next to him, just swinging their knives, but surely... They will start in just a moment. When he just comes back, and uh, do we even know? Do Arctic even know what he's doing? Maybe he's. Oh, okay. He went for a smoke. We so have one hour. I'm guessing that's gonna be max three more minutes. But yeah. uh, still a little bit unlucky. Right. We have one hour. <laughs> There's a lot of time to play with, and it, what what actually happens if both teams play out that entire hour? How is that? Uh... How's it going? I'm guessing what? the CTs win because they the terrorists didn't plant the bomb, you know. Okay, that's interesting. I'm fine, thank for ask, Max Fem. Do you guys know timeout rules? Ready? Yeah, so resynchronizing what they're saying is a legitimate option, but I don't know what is going on. Yeah, talking With about the timeouts break. actually. Some of the teams had uh, little problems out there with uh, timeouts yesterday because they didn't know that only one was allowed per half. And then you get five minutes, but there's no... Uh, it, it's hard to technically pause right here. I think there's some different commands for technical pauses and teams never realize that, so... Yeah. Knife round finally went live. It is now over, and once again we're wondering if, uh, if possibly the team that won the knife round is also going to be the one to win the pistol round and then dominate the first half, like it was yesterday. Pretty much, not much uh, has has changed at all from that uh, little pattern. And we oh, are going by. live with the pistol rounds. Okay, there you are. For, for a moment, I couldn't hear you. So yes. There you are. Okay, okay. Now I'm I'm well back into our universe. As we're seeing, playing Ducks and this team are trying to take it aggressive. Jello with one. Oh, getting denied here. Hype finds him at the right moment of time. It's just about lucky with 17 HP. Gets one. The question is, how many will we get? He needs to get some headshot punts out of there like Ludacris. And two versus two. Bomb down. No kit onto those guys from Lithuania. It could get problematic. Oh, very low inside of the bomb tide. Sassis did not have a chance to win it, unfortunately. And uh, this is a very interesting thing. Arctic opened it up with a good headshot for themselves. Then the CTs want to rush them down from Banana, and they're missing all of their shots. Having a free kill right in front of their faces, yet they're still able to turn around and take the pistol. So, uh, yeah, that's been a nice back and forth story that we'd seen already in the first rounds, but at the end of the day, and of course, playing ducks uh, gather a little bit of uh, control in the, in the early stages of this map. They are on the CT side, so it's good for them that you want the pistol. They're not giving any free rounds over to Arctic Esports, and still the terrorist team planted the bomb, so they will have a full buy soon enough. And that full buy, I mean, the question is what we're going to ask ourselves. How will Rectic approach this? They can go really aggressively into this. They can just say, hey, how are you doing? Let's take some banana control. But once, one thing you also have to take a look at, they don't have any 
armor and they don't have any smokes so no ct smoke possible now it's just about finding some fracks early on that would help out the team enough more than enough and lucky keeps that angle not too aggressive can't be picked from middle right there except he's peaking position known and now there has to be some retreatment because in the long range you don't have a great advantage with that mp9 Well then, Eagles can always be dangerous and still nothing really is happening. Flying Ducks don't have a lot of info on what's going on and this is getting dangerous the longer it lasts. Right now the terrorist team though will lose their bomb and but they're getting finally through the arches. They're finding the kills right there so that's exactly what I expected to happen but I did not think that both of the people running out of the apartments are going to die so easily. Now Yalo also is put down by Pounin. Only Saga and uh, Tori remain just to be slaughtered completely, granting a little bit more money for playing Ducks. It's only one casualty, I'm quite sure they're going to be happy with it. And playing Ducks uh, now comes the real challenge, because they still have some SMGs on their hands, and by some I mean a lot. They have two MP9s and a UMP45, yeah. and they'll be facing off against AKs. Yeah, that could get problematic right now because that armor penetration from those submachine guns also isn't too big, but the grenades are raining in. Putting Jonah already down to 29, and this is an easy frag for it right now for those guys from playing Ducks. Kalinka plays the close range angle. The problem is once he's flashed off, he should be an easy snack for those terrorists. Let's see how they will approach it because that focus is definitely on to be. That focus is definitely right now. On to Banana, Kalinka just takes it aggressively, considers it once more, finds Jalu at least. But there's still one low HP guy on Terrectic. That could get really advantageous for playing Ducks. So, let's see if the terrorists once again want to take it a little bit slow. For now though, playing Ducks definitely have a lot more info on what's going on on the map overall. Like you waiting with the Deagle right here and Sastis, of course he's gonna beat him with the AK-47 right here if he misses the shot. Tori to secure a frag for himself and they are cleaning out this place, but oh no! Okay, was it a good idea? Yeah, that was not really I think he was supposed to go for, but with Hype oh. securing a double kill, there's right. still a chance to win this. I expected uh, Sastis to get uh, a double right there. Clean up bomb site and then in a 2v2 there was a big possibility to win. But Pipe managed to make a 1v3 into a 1v1. Now the bomb is picked up by Tori. He's gonna want to plant it right here on bomb site B because he's got no time to get out of here. But he also is not aware of where the CT might be and he's risking a lot. But Hype also isn't moving just yet, so a tiny bit of time is wasted. Oh, and he steps oh, right there. He hears it. Here. There we got the sound cue. And now it should be Max Bam actually knowing what's up. But take a look at how Hype does it. He's around the corner already, once more, around another corner. Got himself a kit, but no smoke. Yeah, and there makes bad. He got the right positioning in the end. Knew he could only be there, and that was just a little bit slowly reacted. You know what would be interesting, what I really missed there tactically, is if Hype would have made a step while the plan of Rectic, he would got so much pressure onto the finished player, then he needed to do something because he heard the step. Two, two possibilities. You keep on planting, and then you get shut down, or B, you stop the plant and see that there are only 10 seconds left, and no one is coming, you're falling from the bait. That is unfortunate there, how Rectic actually got it if you're a playing Ducks fan, but the buy is quite alright onto the Lithuanian side. You can work with that, definitely. Mm -hmm. Oh man, this is going to be quite tough for playing Ducks. Uh, after all, as I mentioned, they won the pistol rounds. Luckily enough for themselves, they don't want to give up any free rounds right there. But Arctic got the bomb plants. When they got the bomb plant, they got quite a solid full buy on the second round. We're playing the, the third round, excuse me, we're playing Ducks. We're still holding onto their SMGs, and in my opinion, wasn't a good idea. So you had like situations where a guy with a pistol has died because his primary weapon was not really uh, useful in a corner that he was holding down. So they played with like oh, half their this strength. Is nasty. And, yeah. I mean, that is a UMP at its finest. You just go in and say, I don't care what you're doing here, I'm taking you out. And this is exactly how Jonah found that frag early on. Lucky tries to do something with his op, gets one, but not the second. Blocking each other off with, with the communication. Maybe problematic there, but Jello has the right angle. 
Now he needs to find something he can barely does. Two versus three. Okay. Approaching in with the AWP, luckily enough, Naki makes it a little bit easier for him, but now... Okay, he's got the info on where Yalu is, so that's gonna be a little bit easier. Now he tags down Saga, so finishing the buff off with the pistol is possible, but he runs out of ammo, and the time is also okay. running out on him. He doesn't have a defuse kit. I think that Yalu's already won this round, and he's just playing a little bit. And there's still a possibility to try and take down that AWP, but that's not happening. He's gonna blow off with the bomb, luckily, luckily for himself survives, though, is he gonna be happy? That round was definitely winnable, especially with the scan that's gone yeah. through uh, the, the, the EWP shot right there through the box. I really gotta say that I already love this game for all that kind of excitement it delivers us. Once more, we see that playing ducks could not get around brings them into the scenario to say, okay, how about some nice pistols and one up lucky? And his positioning could be so mandatory for the victory in this round, but the circumstances just basically don't speak for yeah, the Ducks themselves. Rectic can just make their way around it. Especially when he's already pulled the trigger on Banana and didn't he really hit the shots. Right now, Arctic, if they keep up the tempo, they might uh, completely demolish playing Ducks here on bombsite uh, A without them really doing anything. So Sass this. He actually loses quite a bit of HP. He's down to one. Has to be careful for that. A flying grenade tossed in by one of his teammates and Pound coming in from behind. Is he going to stop the bomb from being planted? No, not really. First of all, he takes the kill. It's like, what? He was actually standing with his back turned to towards Yona no who was planting the bomb. Oh man, but it wasn't even Yona who killed him, so that's even more surprising. It was Tori stepping in, now Tori with a double combined and only Lucky remains. And I guess it's a little bit lucky again. That's him sitting on banana, missed that shot, nobody really focused on him. He wasn't able to rotate over to A in time. If he was there, there's a possibility they would have won the round, but there also is a possibility he would have lost to the AWP. Right now, he probably wins again. Should be able to hold on to it, although just take a look at that. Yone is coming right close to him. Misses the shot again, but the time is not going to be enough again for Arctic to finish him off. So, yeah, the op is still there. There's going to be a full buy for playing Ducks. And it's always tricky when you save up an AWP of a full buy round and then you have to play an eco, the rest of the team will not be able to support you. And you usually you lose this AWP in that round and it's not worth to have saved it at all anyway. Uh, but this time Lucky was able to hold on to it until round six. Now it's gonna be actually uh, a nice nice thing for them because they can save a little bit of money for themselves. And with Galika's double kill, you can control the bomb too. Yeah, and that, that aggression I mean, Arctic, they've got some magic, magic tries here. They tr Their possibility to say, okay, directly run into this, try to find something as early as possible. Maybe playing Ducks don't expect this, but full denial there. Only Kalinka gets shut down, and that should have never happened in the first place. What was that? I mean, if you have the possibility and you, ha you have seen how you can beat playing Ducks during buy rounds, why would you keep up with the aggression? That just didn't really make sense to me, but... Well, this is how it goes, free to free. Yep, playing Vex once again, getting a shot at building up a little bit of an advantage for themselves, but you still have to remember, and it's going to be important for them to um, do it on the CT side as best as possible. Because right now, it's not as CT side as it was. It didn't change a lot, though, but still, playing Vex need to have the, the majority of the rounds, actually, in the first half. And Kalinka finds Jello. That is expected. I mean, with those kind of guns, you can try your best. But those players from the Allo Nation now need to show how they can come up with something with those pistols. Oh, great distraction. Jonah taken down. Poon, as one of his mates, just jumped down. But Jonah 69. Yeah, no chance. With those low HP and the AWP even fine. So that just puts you in a horrible situation. Saga can try to find anything that runs at him. Chance. I finished it off, and Rectic don't come out of this with anything than just one frack. Okay, so playing ducks are cleaning up a tiny bit. This time, they're gonna have the rifles, the solid full buy up against the AKs of Arctic again. And this time, Saga is gonna have to play with the Galil, so that's gonna be a little bit of a weak link, possibly. 
uh, for Arctic Esports. And I mean, watching in the latest months, weeks, uh, the CSGO tournaments, sometimes people go for the Galils, but I very rarely see somebody achieving something with that Galil. So I'm you know, just starting to wonder whether it's just not a better idea to buy up anything else. There was actually interesting enough a video today from Free Clicks Philip about Galil and Famas, and basically the message of the video was that the Galil is better by many terms, but still is just used less. Which I don't know. If I play Galil, it feels like I don't hit. It goes all over the place, but it could also be my horrible yeah. aim. That is the reason for that. I don't know. Maybe it's both. Like if the AK it works, but let's see if that Galil is actually put into big use. Once more, we had that yesterday. Saga could also win for the UMP and then full utility. That could have helped out a team maybe a little bit more. Dedicating to that support role. Flashbang is good for I Find Saga. The UK station player with the Lithuanian origin finds Ori a frack in the buy round of Arctic. And now it's just about getting the execution right. Yeah, and that death was definitely not about what he had in his hands. So we kind of really blame the Galil at all right here. And Kalinka is going to be picking from the library this time, though. Four people going up against him. It's not going to be as easy as the double kill on Banana, but he still gets that double kill. And they are still not really paying so much attention to him. So he can spam a little bit through that smoke to deliver some more damage. Finally, Tori from behind is going to execute him back to three on two. Still in favor of playing Ducks, though, with Pound inside of the site very comfortably. Finding the headshot on the Allo is just going to close out on Tori, who's being surrounded by the rest of the enemy team. Kalinka, amazing! job right there. Does Jalu stand for Junior Alu? I mean, no idea. Some people are saying it would be great. Some people are saying Jesus Alu. Yeah, Jesus Alu. I think all, all those guys, all the Finns. You know, if you're talking about the scene, Arctic or Arctic, excuse me, is the descendant of Alu. All of them are just pretty much handpicked by the Red Bull God himself. And welcome to the Arctic team. But. No, but I think the Finnish scene has great to come up with, especially, I don't know if you know, but there's a great academy tournament very soon coming up. So if you're into Finnish scene, if you like speaking Finnish, you might take a look into that. But right now we're at ELC at the Legend Series 1 Season 2. And oh no, Lucky, how can you miss such an important shot? Well, Kalinka would definitely not let that go, I guess. Oh, once again, a miss from him. That's got to be real, real tough for him to run away right now. The Tech Nine's about to run him now, but actually, it's a little bit of a save from Kalinka. And as I mentioned, as Lucky misses two shots, Kalinka comes in and saves the day again. So this guy seems to be this far a little MVP for playing Ducks, but overall, in this round, the team proved they're good enough, all of them, to, to, to assume the lead here. 6-3. They double the number of rounds Arctic have this far, but it's still nothing major. Playing Ducks definitely cannot just drop it off where they are right now. They have to get at least three more rounds in order to be happy. Yeah, pre pretty much summing it up quite well. 10-5, 9-6, those are acceptable score lines in this moment of time. And those guys from Rectic, as you mentioned it in the past, they didn't deliver the best performances like, loss against Pixel Fire, loss against Pump and Black, and Best of Freeze, and also against Spain's of Existence. This is a best of one, now or never. How you could say it right now. Well, now or never, and then three times more the same kind of thing in the other best of ones that they're gonna have to play here. But yeah, the best of ones definitely give you a little bit of an advantage, though in this kind of group format, there is a little bit of a possibility for the other teams to learn a little bit about you, for them to watch these matches, and when you have some real surprising strats prepared, it's hard to save them. It's hard to keep them, like, you know, hidden. And here comes Frax from everywhere around that map. Oh, Kalinka with two! Does he get the third? Not happening! But he does, does a lot of major damage, and now it's just about Lucky getting through. Oh no, oh yes, there he comes, jumps around. And that is the tech nine in use just perfectly. Spray throughout the entire... Oh god, this is getting... One shot! Tight, and no! Oh, man. Max Bam! What? With four frags, Max Bam, and three HP. How is that possible? Is that... What? Lucky was sitting behind the smoke, right behind the bombers. 
back. And two of his teammates decided to run straight into the crosshair of Tories. And I don't really have an idea if, if that was uh, a good decision made by them. After all, it turned out that it definitely was not. And, uh, okay, Sass is going to lose a lot of HP in the very beginning of this round. But it, it feels pretty sad to waste all that Kalinka's work in the previous round. He got a triple kill. Lucky had amazing position. The enemies were tagged down, all low on health. Yet they weren't able to win this round. Now Kalinka's once again going to get an opening kill. At least um, one on Banana. This time it's not a double, it's not a triple. He loves to get these multi-kills, but... I mean, playing Ducks... All the rest of the team should start playing. It's not always going to be Kalinka just clutching the rounds for you. Yeah. Pretty much summing it up quite well, Rectic. Their way to get into this is just quite possible. And now it is just about lucky. He's getting Sadis very, very early on. Three versus four, and it's all silent around the map. It's concerning and really worrying on the playing duck side. What will happen? The smokes are now popping, and here comes all the utility playing ducks came up with. But Saga finds Snooky. And that brings us back to the free versus free. That brings us just to two players that are there onto the A side. But Hype is there to do work. Well, good little crossfire being set up right there. Of course, uh, it was divided by the smoke, so they didn't really exactly support themselves. But luckily enough for them, Arctic, one person walked into the crosshire of, uh, of one guy and uh, the other into Hype. And that's 7 4 in favor of playing Ducks. They just lost a round very unluckily for themselves. Now they're taking one back, and it, it can act as a little bit of an economy reset. So I guess it is acceptable, although they definitely shouldn't be happy with what it looked like in this round number 10. I wouldn't say it differently because. It's worrying that you don't get that take on the side because of the smokes that are laying so well. They could have considered to go back onto B. They had a little bit of time left that would have made possible, but they didn't go for that. Now only working with the pistols and full armor. It's just about an explosive push. And a lot of great tack shots all over the place that they need to hit. And playing ducks are cautious about it. They are not running into this, and I think that is exactly what they need to do. All right, now, bomb side B again. I'm not sure if it's a good idea for Arctic, because last time, only because playing those were so sloppy, were they able to win it right here, but then they've got pistols. It's good to poke around everywhere to, to just test their chances, but not to run into the CT spawn with the bomb in their hands. What were they thinking? And they were running straight into the AWP, so yeah, it would be nice to run it down to pick up the weapon or something, but not the bomber. Yeah, there was a choice with the smoke. They could have smoked coffins or they could have smoked CT. And they decided to go for coffins. Not really sure why they totally committed to that. But this brings them into the scenario of just playing pistols. Playing Ducks already took the round. Playing Ducks already took the entire half time as well. And that is not really how you want to start off as a terrorist on this map. Poon comes in with the flames. Needs to really consider if he can come back. He does. Thanks to his teammates, he's still alive, and the Koreans are doing a great job here on the CT side. Yeah, definitely, and that, that's beginning to look even more convincing, because uh, in the very beginning it was, it tended to be kind of sloppy, like with Arctic, bouncing back very quickly after losing the pistol round, but at the end of the day it's... Uh, it's playing ducks possibly just still warming up into the game. Uh, they, they have to like get their gears going and uh, most importantly get the equipment going. Because may I remind you the first round that Arctic actually won was up against three SMGs on a full buy. Yeah, but what we also have to put in mind is how those guys from Isuba yesterday lost their first match against UKCS teams. And suddenly then came back and took the entire series, and especially the final match, 16 to 3. I mean, a 16 to 3 is definitely more than decent. Mm-hmm. Well, we're, we're always going to have that, uh, that picture in our minds, what happened yesterday. We might be comparing these matches to it, but 
Not too sure if it's actually uh, so, so good, if we can base our opinions at all on that, because the groups just have a huge variety. For instance, the existence yeah. and plant key group, in my opinion, it's going to be on a little bit of a different level than what we're seeing this far from uh, group A, from group B. My god, just beautiful executions, what we're seeing right here. Just taking them down one by one, finding the frags, and this is exactly how playing ducks can continue. Okay, 16,000 out there for, for some people. Playing ducks will not have to care about losing any weapons at all. And overall, it's the last round also, so... They can go all out, uh, go all out. They can just uh, try to experiment a little bit, maybe. But they're going for the same kind of setup. Two AWPs. Actually, Kalinka playing with the AWP, wondering if it's a good idea because so many times with the M4, he was able to completely demolish his enemies so well. <laughs> Lucky oh, also brutal. helping out Lug J. Both of them just sharing the kills, and as you say, this is brutal. Only one kill has gone the way of. Yona 69 and Hype to shut him down right after that. Overall, I have to say some good stuff about Hype. He's a top fragger on the team and that's not even what I wanted to point out because I didn't like see all of these frags in particular, but definitely his defense on A was extremely consistent and he was always there for the team and he was always just shutting down the entire attacks from, uh, from Arctic Esports. Now 11-4 yeah. in favor of playing Ducks after the first half. Surely a satisfying score for them. Now they just have to close it out. So they have to not struggle so much with uh, finishing off the game. Yeah, and this is where it can actually come in. I mean, oh, that is a beautiful oh. run, Sir Saga. He takes down Lucky, peeks a little shoulder here, shoulder there, and suddenly there's a head less onto the Ducks. Only four Quagglings that are left onto the terrorist side. But, I mean, everything is possible. They all have armor. They can still push onto A or B. But quickly, before the action starts, if you're here new to the ELC chat and if you're new to this ELC channel, you can use something called baddies. Exclamation mark baddies and exclamation mark giveaway will directly explain you how it works. It's some in-game currency or in-chat currency. And you can use it to get some great prizes. But let's get back into this as Jalu has to hold a big defense here. Against some left wing and start oh, on the running way out to of ammo. The corner. How the hell did that even happen? He was already running out of ammo with a USB, and then when all the people show up right in front of his face, he's able to pull off another headshot. Saga completely destroying the lineup of playing ducks, and that's a very, very solid pistol round in here from Arctic. And definitely that opening kill that they got, the Saga hit in the middle with the B2000, made them a lot more comfortable with that pistol. And they closed it out, so Plague Dogs will have to wait around a little bit. They did not get uh, uh, the bomb plant on the contrary to what Arctic have done in the first half of this map, so that might complicate things a little bit. At the end of the day, yes it is, and 11-4, it is quite a considerable uh, scoreline after the first half, but it can all change so quickly. You just have to win the pistol round and then not break under the pressure of the first full buy that the enemies go for. And you have five rounds for free nearly. Yeah, pretty much summing it up right now. And playing ducks with that buy have some possibilities, especially with Banana if they're finding Junior Jalu right now. Excuse me, if they're finding Jalu early on. That could work out, especially the scout could do some massive damage. The grenade finds nearly nothing, and here comes the army of Lithuanians that are making their way through. But Jalo is here to find one hype, gets that one though, and it's pretty much getting a decimation here. As oh. playing ducks can't get anything done with this one. Oh no, not so bad actually, with uh, the CTs running out of ammo. It did get much more complicated for him, but with uh, Tori joining the fray again, I mean, you remember the quad kill he did on that bomb side B when they were still on the T side, and I can imagine him pulling that off more times, much more times than uh, on the CT side actually when he defends that bomb site. Yeah, that's exactly how you can put it. Flying Ducks now having not much at it, only those pistols. No armor goes. A suicidal mission that's on its way, and it's called maybe get that bomb plant. 
but maybe not. So let's take a look how they will approach, as already Saga finds the first one with Hype. With Poon, maybe with Lucky as well. How's he feeling? Nope, he doesn't feel that way. Max Spam gets another one though. And it seems like those guys from Aww. Finland, it seems like the skin might find a way back into this. Although they were getting spoiled in this round at least. They're getting a lot of easy kills for themselves and there is a completely clueless, of course, what can you do with the Glocks when you're caught off by a smoke? Cannot even go through it because it's being spammed all the time, so... No, tough situation. Overall, though, now it's going to be a full buy for playing Ducks. Though, on the CT side, they were playing with a double op setup. This time, they don't have a single AWP, so it might still not be, like, the greatest uh, equipment that they've got for themselves. Hype with a good kill. And now it's going to be uh, a Pound who's spotted out. Uh, Tori actually getting through the smoke in the middle. Smoke from the HEs, actually, a little bit earlier. So he knew that somebody will be coming their way. They still lost a lot of HP, but they're all alive. And it is a 5-on-2 in favor of Plank Duck. So, yeah, you were talking about how Arctic might be bouncing back into the game. But at the end of the day, you can see what's happening when Plank Ducks finally have the weapons. Yeah. Give those ducks an AK in their hand, and suddenly everything seems to be over. Poon finds Jello. One more to go for, oh. and the hat is cleanly ripped off right here from Sastis, which puts us in a five-point advantage situation for playing ducks. Arctic still has a lot of money. They can still come up with something in this one. Rifles are on the board. Utility is on the board. But as you've mentioned, once they got the real guns on, the, on, on themselves, once they got anything to really work with, they're on fire, and we already seen it in halftime number one. And additionally, Poon was the one guy that was low on health, and then he still secured a double kill for himself so easily, man. Now, Yona is gonna have uh, an AWP, and he already has something to show us with it. Getting a kill in the middle, Arctic once again, they want to put up some resistance, though... Is it gonna be enough to stop playing ducks completely? Because right now, resetting their economy, there's a possibility for Arctic to actually have a very similar uh, CT side to what playing ducks have shown us in the first half because there also was a time when Arctic were able to win like one or two rounds uh, but then playing ducks uh, completely annihilated them so right here playing ducks with a very impressive first four by uh, but then maybe Arctic also replacing the SMGs with rifles uh, will have what it takes to win that was the question do they have what it takes to win or won't they have the possibility. We're seeing in the last 50 seconds, still playing decks. It's very indecisive and very, very patient, but only two more players are waiting there onto the A site. Hype plays reconnaissance here with Kalinka. And they just wait for a mistake to happen. They just wait for anyone doing something dumb. And let's see if that will happen. Max spam sends there. Especially into Pit, finds one, but the frags are happening for playing Ducks, putting it back to a 3 versus 3, one more to find, and the site is clear. And here we are, only Hype needs to cut them off, needs to put up a checkpoint and say, go here, but you won't pass us. Okay, so, well, the AWP only able to hit one, now it's gonna get picked up again. Yalu with a little bit of a chance ahead of him, but uh, playing Ducks, will they peak? Oh, Nucky was... A little bit impatient in that spawn site. Hype is going to get spotted out real quickly and he might be surprised by that, but still only loses six points of health, so he's going to be fine with it. More than fine. Yalu already backing off, trying to save up the AWP. Let's us know that it's going to be 13-7 in favor of playing Ducks and Yona. Once again, possibly he'll get that AWP into his hands. And a great entry he's had in this round, but he definitely needs to repeat that in the following one and also stay alive a little bit longer. Yeah, staying alive, that is the thing. In this moment for those guys. Take, they're getting themselves two rifles secured. Mech spam can't really afford anything. Well, probably will force through. I can't imagine. No? Okay, Mech spam sticks to... Okay, oh, there finally, go. There he has the eagle. Yeah, finally, pretty much. And the money on Terectic is just so concerning. Because if playing ducks get this one... You can say pretty much bye-bye. It will be 14 points on the board for playing ducks. Rectic has... Nearly nothing to play with anymore. And then the Lithuanians. It's pretty much the hat that is already under the guillotine. It's just a court you gotta use. <laughs> okay. Interesting. It was a little bit harsh right for, for an example. Yeah, just. 
Well, but, but, but it definitely kind of fits in here, actually. And yeah, playing Dutch Revolution will be will be possibly running in right now. Yalu with a great uh, HE right there, delivering quite a bit of damage. But yeah, they have the Kevlar's and you know, still avoid part of it. Iona is gonna get a good kill, and as I mentioned, he's gonna have to find some more than just one right now. Rush is out and will pull the trigger, but misses by far. Poon with an easy kill on Sastis. I don't think Yoda needs it so much support right there, but a good position from Yalu, although giving himself away already, will he have a chance to get another one back to 2 1 2? No, it's very even doubt. Yalu, I think he has spotted out Poon, but both of them receiving a tiny bit of damage. Both of them still alive, and that's gonna be problematic for Arctic. 1v2, Yona has to clutch this round, and he knows a little bit about Lucky rotating over the bomb side B and trying to plant the bomb right there but after Poon got a kill on bomb side A he might also or should actually be thinking that they are going to go into the clean bomb site so that is a mistake yeah. that he's made right here he's going to waste a lot of time that way he does not have a defuse kit and nobody died on bomb side B so there's not going to be a possibility for him to pick it up so I'm thinking he's just going to try to save that AWP and that's exactly what he's doing uh, understandable decision. I mean, what shall you do when you're down to just yourself and one AWP boom? Playing Ducks did it smart. They tried their best to use their brain and it worked out more than fine as we see. It will be 14 to 7 on the board. The double amount of points will be onto the Lithuanians. And I missed that. You know, right now is the perfect time to go for a tactical break. Oh, yeah, definitely might be a possibility. We'll see if they also think that way, but uh, yeah, the match is about to be over. There's not going to be a better moment, and if you give up the 15th round, it's uh, possibly going to be already too late. Dark, they have to figure out what they will do with the scarce amounts of money that they got, but there are no questions asked. They all know that they're going to go for a force buy in here, and that's what they're doing. Here comes a grenade already down to middle. Flashes are raining in, and the buy from Rectic is more squishy than satisfying. We see FAMAS, UMP, and a 5-7, M4, and AWP. That's a great mixture, actually. But does it work out is the question. As Rectic, as Arctic. Oh, I'm always getting that names, name totally wrong. It's Arctic. But I was Keeps actually amazed patience. how you came up with it. it. It it sounds really nice. It's definitely not what they meant, but it's also a cool idea for a name. Yeah, Rectic. Yeah, if they win, they're they're Rectic as hell, man. They're so Rectic. But <laughs> right now, it's pretty much playing ducks, getting Arctic onto the Rect status. Ah, man, not yet. With a fifteen-seven or a sixteen-seven, it's not like that horrible. But once more, what do we have seen just yesterday? If you tune in today. Never did any team who is losing get into double digits in those best of ones. Yeah, that's a little bit of a sad fact, but definitely that's what you have to state and hype and clean get her cleaning up and indeed a 15th round so much closer to playing ducks right now. They might be closing out this map. Right here and right now. Yalu. Still a little bit dangerous. You've still got Yona somewhere out there on the battlefield, so he'll be able to deliver the damage with the AWP. Nice double kill to at least bring it a little bit closer. Two on three right now. Bomb is planted for playing ducks. And there's a possibility to try and retake it for Arctic. They still have an incendiary to use. They do have a defuse kit this time around. And uh, the terrorists are running out of nades. They only have a single flashbang. Lucky, I think, was spotted out right there. But he's also saw that tower. And it's a little bit problematic for Yona. When he does not hit his shot, when he still doesn't die, he's quite glad that he can still save up that AWP. But these guys, they just spent all their money on a force buy. They're not going to get much more. And it's 15 no, they're for not playing dogs. For... Oh, it's just terrific. And there the desperation finally sets in for Arctic. Which are now realizing, okay, this is the last try. Or it will be just us getting shut down once more. And with the 3,000 averagely on the rest of the players, what will they come up with? We have a scout onto Jello. Okay, Junior Allo picking up that okay. one. Let's see what the rest does. UMP and Max Spam with... So we stick with, yeah, there. that's what I expected. We see two scope guns, we see the SSG as well as the IWP, an M4 and two UMPs. A great mixture once more with playing ducks probably having just a better chances. Yeah, definitely. 
That's what we should be thinking right here, but maybe some uh, miracle will happen right here for Arctic to still save them. Kalinka does get dinked, but only for 23 damage, and he takes out Saga already. But luckily, or I don't know how you really want to judge that, but this far, only the UMPs are going down, so technically, it's the least damage playing ducks can do, but it's still a 5v3. Yeah, and that 5v3 already looks like we can just say GG, but I'm one of those guys who say never underestimate what can happen in the last few seconds, but an AWP as well as a Scout are just not those kind of guns you want to have in a retake scenario against five Lithuanians. And oh. now the realization sets in. Okay, they're probably already here. Number yeah. one. Let's see if number... What? 4 to 3 at its finest? Oh, and Poon. That is just finishing off your enemy perfectly. And there we go for another, another, another great one. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm Jesus, Jesus Christ. That ending right quick. there. He was so prepared, actually, for them to come. And then, as you said, missing that, that last guy. But then he also did not recover in time. I think he was running with a knife in his hand or something. Of course, trying to get there as quickly as possible as his main weapon was AWP. So there's no chance to actually run with it. Uh, but that little moment was enough for Pound to actually kick in and, and get that frag. So that was a nice match to watch, definitely assuring us that playing Ducks will have the upper hand in this group. Hype showing up as an amazing player this far, staying as the top fragger until the very end of the game, and I'm definitely going to have some high hopes for him for the entirety of the tournament. But next up, what's waiting for us is UX versus Pugstars. These are the guys that can surprise from the shadows. These are the guys that we don't actually... Uh, think we'll do so good, but uh, just as yesterday, we didn't expect uh, Reason to do so much. Yeah, I, I mean, the UK team did a great job yesterday, still they didn't make it, unfortunately, though I would have wished to see UK guys on land, and uh, not on the land that is in the UK, that doesn't count, of course. So <laughs> that would have been great to see that, but, uh, you know, as a German, I don't have that great patriotic feeling like UX Gaming, You Got the Wind is hype, hype, your Deutschen schafft das schon. No, it's not like that. I just have that feeling that there could be just a possibility of Puckfors making it. As you talked about, they're from all around the world. Their English is all quite, it should be quite fine as they're playing Pucks majorly. So they're skilled. I see them as skilled players, I see them as great aimers. Though I have not seen much from them, let's see if strategic finesse and a team play can wake work out, make it work out, or if just you know, going full ESCA style works fine. We're going to find well, out. Dust two is not there anymore, so there's no possibility to actually go for that purely skill based of a map. Uh, but uh, yeah, there's a possibility they're gonna have like Mirage or Cash or, or Cobblestone grind it out completely and they will have the one surprise map where they will be able to stomp everybody into the ground. But if any team reads through that or if, if that map gets banned, it could get a little bit uh, more sloppy. But yeah, we'll see what Pugstars can actually show right here. I also have some high hopes for them, but um, UX Gaming, I know this organization, I've seen these guys many times, and, and uh, I think that they would be disappointed if they lost a match against so, uh, some completely mixed team that's uh, not really shown up in, in any big tournaments this far. So. Yeah, UX, mm -hmm. they will not want to lose this. And uh, still, we have to remember that what you pointed out at the ending of the previous map, when a team loses, they never really get the double digits right here in this tournament. But with these kind of matches starting, we might hope to get to see some closer outcome finally. Yeah, I see this like a big, big Kinder surprise. You know you know what Kinder surprise are? Those, those chocolate eggs with the toy in it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty much this game is a kinder surprise, and whatever toy is in it, it's going to be horrible, it's going to be very easy, it's going to be very fast, or the greatest one you could ever get, like in every seventh egg. And if you just joined us in, what we can do here at ELC, and that is a great feature. I mean, you gotta think so far. We have an, our own currency pretty much that are called Betty's. And you can right now bet will it be those guys from UX or those guys from Pucksters to make it. So Logically, you are the guys who can tell us. You're the leading analysts in this one. Bet your betties 
and maybe get something great out of it. Well, who's your favorite in this one? Can we actually talk about a favorite without really knowing? I don't know. Like, uh, just as last time, uh, when we already broken down everything that can happen in the match, we talked about Arctic, we talked about playing Ducks and the recent performances, what it's looked like in the past for these teams, what they could do. It's once again going to go down to, like, the last word being your spirit animals and stuff like that. Something that completely doesn't make sense, but this time we don't have much uh, constructed stuff that we can sort of say about these teams. But um, I don't know. I rarely believe in the Pug lineups with some good aim, so I'm going to say that I'm expecting UX to win, uh, but I'm not going to be like surprised with wide eyes if Pugstars actually take it. So I'm not saying that they're useless, that they're not going to have a chance to win it, but uh, I just don't trust teams that are not uh, actually really playing with each other for a long time, that are not they're hoping to achieve something as a collective, but they're just going to replace a member if something goes wrong. Yeah. yeah, I see what you mean. I see where we're coming from with this, but... Uh... You have to also put it that way. Those guys from Legends were also not together for that long, and still they managed to get into the finals. So and played with back at subs, season one. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, also played with Standin. So I see good options for those guys from Parksters. I see that sometimes the best of ones, you know, when not, it's not best of threes when you don't have to play it for a long time. You have seriously the option to take down your opponent easily, very, very fast, just through frags, just through one map. This is where it's about. Not free, one. Yeah, you have to set up a huge pace right there so they can, can't cut, catch up with what's going on. Even if you don't have like great strats, always try to, to lure for these, uh, for these entry frags to make it a little bit easier when you play in a 5v4. Maybe it's going to be uh, possible to take it. Yeah, I, I see where you're going with that. Uh, but um, the question is, will they be able to actually do it? Will they be smart enough to come up with such ideas? And, uh, and have they actually played on that level lately? Parkstars are these uh, the guys who only play like weekly tournaments and stuff like that, uh, that, that nobody really even knows about? Or is it going to be a team that uh, prepared themselves for something bigger? Yeah, this is the thing. I mean, going into that preparation, I cannot imagine that there is like a big boot camp. I mean, boot camp is a little bit too much, but you know, a big kind of preparation. Okay, we have those four oppo three opponents. Um, we do this, this, and this, and this. I think they might have people in the background. I think they prepared like with watching that one and another um, demo and watching that one and another video of them, but I think that it just comes down to the maps once more. And I think Inferno once more showed us, there we have it once more, the knife round thing. The knife round thing occurs every game. Every game we had it yesterday. When you won the knife round, you already got successful. Yeah, kind of, kind of, it seemed like it. So probably the, the fact is that we did not find a team that is a little bit more proficient with the knives than with the guns this far. <laughs> yeah, I think you're not, do, do people practice knife rounds? Do they just go like, okay guys, uh, one hour uh, knife I practice. Don't think, Let's... I don't think that anybody actually practices it, but there might be people who are naturally good with the knife, who uh, have some good ideas during the knife round, because you have some people that just want to brute force it, that just hop into a guy and they want to stab him to death. But you have some people who crouch, who try to avoid <laughs> some uh, some hits and stuff like that. So, uh, yes, yeah, some people can be much better than others at knifing. Yeah, they're dedicated knife swords. I mean, people sometimes play knife only just to stab each other in the back. I mean, I don't know why they would call full Brutus, but Caesar thanks you very much for doing so. And this is where we're going into our second match, UX Game Pucksters, in a very, very few moments. But stay logically with us, because throughout the entire day, you'll see all those teams play, you'll see all those teams perform and come up with something unique. You know, that system is very nice to see in those group stages, and logically, also a big shout-out to our sponsors, Mountain Dew Instant Gaming ELC, who are doing this, of course, and challenge me, G. G, I, you know, I hate it. Uh, you, I know you hate it. That's the wider, right way around. I want, um, because we don't know both teams really, a scoreline for something we barely know. 
16 0. <laughs> okay, I love it. I love it. No, 62. I think um, fifth, fifth overtime. Uh, will be something like 27, no, tw- 28, uh, 19. Tw- I, I, don't, I don't calculate this stuff right now. Forget about it. But you know what I want to say? It's, well, it will go into overtime because both teams prepared and then do the total opposite. So it would be also fun to see, in my opinion. I think one team will just be standing on respawn and typing in kill in the console, and that's how it's going to end. No, really, no idea. It's, it's hard to Match just fixing. predict the entire score line and, and stuff like that. But a safe bet, seeing what's been happening in Group A, seeing what's already happened in the first match yeah. right here, a safe bet is to say that it's going to be 16-7 or 16-8, because that's all that we're seeing this far, with like one single exception or something. Yeah, I think there was no exception. I think it went never, it never went. There. Yeah, we had two yeah, games the that even went worse than six yeah. and seven. Yeah, but so mostly yeah, I see what you come. See what you come from. It's horrible, actually, that it goes that bad for some of the teams. I mean, six and seven once more. It is not really a score line where you say we really did our best. We really came close to them because that didn't happen. That basically just did not happen. So I think it will be interesting to see. It will be very difficult as well for those guys from. UX or Puxers to fight against Flying Ducks, because this will be their next one, or for any of those teams fighting against Rectic. I see them coming together once more. I see them coming together. All right, now, so um, overall, as uh, as this far, ESOB have completely surprised in Group A, coming in from losers brackets from the very beginning, actually, of the groups. All the way to take the first place spot, do we expect once again a thing like that to happen? Is it going to be Arctic or the loser of this match to come back and, and take the revenge? Or do you think that maybe this time, as it is pretty much supposed to be, playing Ducks will, will just safely take it? Because as we said yesterday, probably it's all going to be decided in a match playing Ducks versus Arctic. That the winner of this match will also be repeated in the in the finals of this group, should once again be playing Ducks versus Arctic, and then playing Ducks will take it, or is it going to be different? I see. First of all, I see playing Ducks going directly into the final after 18 CET. Like I mean, directly going into the final match there of this group, and I see uh, it's difficult. And we're I mean, we can't really make predictions. Let's be real for a second. We don't really know UX. We don't really know pucks. There is no major information. We have no matches we've really seen. So it just comes up actually to this match to say once more playing Dex Rectic in the final one. Or if we just, you know, get surprised like yesterday with Freeze and like yesterday with Isuba, who were in the beginning looking horrible, but then got their way through. Yeah, and I, I kind of trust in the, the hand-picking skill of, of Arxaline, Uh because this far when he was playing with these Pug teams, that he, he convinced me they were really good. And they indeed had very nice score lines, but it was back in the days, of course. Like, back in the days when Epiphany Bolt were the kings of Tier 3, they were breaking through to Tier 2, they are able to always beat them down. And I think that that's where we can place this tournament, say, around Tier 3 right here. So... If it stayed the same, because at this moment Epiphany Bolts just completely disappeared, like Arctic and Playing Ducks have fallen down to play in these tournaments instead of actually going up higher. If these guys, if Arxaline did not like get worse over that time, over that year, there's a big possibility they're going to be also an ice contender in the entire group. Yeah, and... Um... What is more likely interesting to see in my eyes is that those guys have played Oxalin, as you mentioned, you played back at Pathless a few months ago. You probably know about that, as you're mm-hmm. really, really good with that scene. But, uh, yeah, this is interesting. This is very, very interesting. And now, Pathless, they lost their last tournament where they were in with Oxalin, actually being the bottom fragger entirely, having the worst rating in their entire match. So... Not really, really something you want to have. Not really good to say it like this. Not convincing necessarily, as you are saying. No. But then, uh, yeah, looking at their score lines overall, they've been able to beat Isoba twice. Isoba are the top team in, uh, in the group right here. Uh, so, group A, this part right here. So, there's a possibility that uh, they're better than Isoba. And, and they might also like try to face off against them on LAN. Who knows? Yeah. 
And so far, see UX Gaming is a little bit favorites with the bets and the betties. And once more, to remind you, at ELC, we have something very great for you. It still did a great, great comparison yesterday. It's not some scammy kind of skin website. It's not some scammy kind of stuff you get. You get everything, something physical. You can tie back some merch mark giveaways some, for some great pins we're giving away here. So feel free to do so. You can use your chat currency, the baddies, and we should be good to go in a little bit. Let's take a look at the entire groups once more, because that would be interesting to talk about as there are two more days ahead, as there are two more teams except the one today that will advance to the land finals in Hamburg. So let's take a look beside the schedule we're having right here to go for the groups in a second. There we go. Yeah. And we talked about it. I mean, you, you said right here, Group C is not that interesting, or still interesting, but the teams are not that high quality as they are in Group D. I mean, existence of the Planet Key. They're, I think they're one of the top ones here. Top four, at least, of the entire. Um, uh, surely tournament. the ones we're looking forward to seeing play against each other, most importantly, but then we would love to see both of them on land. So it's a little bit of a shame that they're both put in the same group. Yeah. Uh, but then who knows, maybe, maybe it will backfire on us that existence will not be able to even win five rounds against some of these teams out there, because <laughs> as we are saying all the time, we cannot expect anything in, in this tournament. A lot of surprising scorelines this far, everything pretty much one sided. So when something goes wrong for even the best team, it's going to end up going extremely wrong, apparently. Yeah, and this is where it could get, as you've mentioned, really problematic. But um, what I would like to see is Plant Key getting there to Hamburg. I, not because they're Germans directly, but it would be, I think, interesting to see them once more on a bigger kind of land. They have been to German Spring Meisterschaft, and um, they Deutsche Meisterschaft. It was German. It was the German Championship actually, and they were getting out of. The semifinals quite early, if I'm not totally wrong, were a big wanted logically because we don't even need to talk about that. They're the biggest German team right now. But once more, seeing them on land, once more fighting against an international competition, not the German competition, would be really interesting to see. And in Group C, please, 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 FTW Esports, please, Portuguese guys, make it through. Okay, we'll see if your uh, if your pleas are gonna be listened. Um, I don't know. I very much like and liked the, the Lithuanian teams, uh, but I'm not sure if I can put my hopes in them anymore. Uh, but after seeing playing Ducks, I'm definitely reassured that it's perfectly fine to do so. Uh, so just looking at that Group C then, I would say that Gameplay DNA are going to fight for it. So maybe it's going to be Gameplay versus, uh, versus FTW as the finals of that group. Yeah, also two Lithuanian team playing Ducks and gameplay DNA together or more likely against each other in the land finals would be interesting to see. Um, but that will be just decided tomorrow and today. At the end, you know, we're going to be here for a while. We're just having some kind of difficulties, which will be fixed in a matter of seconds. And that just means that the group stage will for group B will be over. If you don't know how the system works, like you're seeing it right now here on your screen, it is basically playing Ducks 1 and the victor of the upcoming match play against each other. And the victor of that match advances directly into the final match of the group B. The loser of that match gets into some kind of decider. And whoever loses, like Rectic is going to play against UX or Pucksters, whoever is losing and whoever is losing that match, Rectic versus whoever is getting out of the tournament. Yeah, that, that is horribly explained. My God, that was Jesus. Yeah, so basically in the opening matches, when you lose, you still get a chance in the, in the losers brackets. Yeah. It goes all the way to the finals. But in the finals, the team that comes in from the upper brackets does not have a, like, a big real advantage. They only get a veto advantage. So uh, they cannot make a single mistake in the finals when they finally get there. But other than that, when you lose at any given point in the group, mm, you're still going to be safe to play another match to try and uh, and come into the finals from the losers brackets. Yeah, that is pretty much summing it up. And um, if you actually 
Don't know who takes care of our great tournament system. It's Challenge Me, and if you don't know what Challenge Me is about, it is pretty much a matchmaking servers that you can use to play 1v1s, 2v2s, aim maps, grenade maps, all that kind of stuff, also 5v5s. So feel free to logically check out Challenge Me. You'll find a great bunch of maps and a great bunch of fun there with your friends. So that will pretty much help you out to get better. I mean, I've played 2v2s a lot on, um, on what was it called again, on, on Challenge Me. And I liked it a lot. You know, I was actually putting coins in and uh, no one no one played with me for some reason. Okay. I don't know why. 